Hello, 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 JLR Investigates. Come on in, everyone. Come on in, JLR Army. How's everyone going? Happy Sunday, everyone. It is the 14th of April. The month is flying, isn't it? Let's talk about this wild case out of Oklahoma. Four people, as some of you might or might not know, got arrested in connection with the, looks like, murder and kidnapping of... Veronica Butler, 27, and Jillian Kelly, she was 39. Four people now are being held accountable. We got a lot to talk about in this case because we still don't know details. Uh, I was hoping the uh, Oklahoma OSBI would release some sort of information, maybe a press conference. They put a little statement out last night after these arrests went down in the afternoon. They went in a full SWAT and apprehended these four misfits right here, these, these individuals right here, got their mug shots. We've been sharing each and every one of their mug shots on JLR Investigates, also talking about uh, each person, giving a little bit about background and history of these individuals. And they are all currently being held in the Texas County Jail in Oklahoma. I didn't even know they had a Texas County in Oklahoma, but they do. And a lot of locals in that area, in that county, have been sending me tips, and I appreciate the tips. I appreciate the insight, because we want to know who these four misfits are. We want to know a lot about them. We want to know what transpired, what, when, and how. And, and OSBI hasn't given out a press conference, so we don't know details, folks. Uh, thank you, uh, Kepi Gal. Kepi Gal, thank you for the support, and thank you for being a member of JLR Investigates. We are all JLR's army. We want to get the backstory and history of these people. So maybe they'll come up with a press conference in the next day or two. Maybe they won't. But we're trying to figure this out because we want to know what role each participant uh, played. According to the mother of Jillian Kelly, the victim, one of the victims, she's 39. She was the pastor's wife. Tiffany Adams confessed. She confessed to this crime. But then it seems like the rumor mill is once she confessed, she bottled up and lawyered up uh, Letitia Wagner. Thank you for the support. She bottled up and she lawyered up and stayed quiet because I think authorities were trying to get out of her. Where are these two young, innocent females? Where are these two individuals? Where are these moms at? They don't know. They haven't found them. I put out some videos, you know, with properties. Uh, one of the, one of the misfits here, this uh, 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 Tad guy, this Tad Burt Cullum guy, the boyfriend of Tiffany, got property in New Mexico. We talked about that on one of my last reports. But he does have property. I'm just wondering if he ever made his way down to property two hours away to Logan, New Mexico, about a two-hour drive. Okay, so I got some tips and information, right? So these four misfits, they get rounded up, and they get sent to the Texas County Jail. I'm going to show you a Google Maps of what this place looks like. It's a very, it looks like a, a jail, like a, like a sheriff's office slash jail in the middle of nowhere, like in the middle of the dusty, wild west of uh, Oklahoma panhandle. And what I'm told, folks, and this, I, you know, I trust my sources, is Mr. Burt, Mr. Tad Burt Cullum, and the butcher, the butcher, his name is Cole Twombly. Some people say Twombly, too. It looks like T-W-O-M-B-L-Y. I'll just say Twombly. That's how I think it's pronounced. If I'm saying it wrong, I apologize. But I shouldn't have to apologize because I really haven't, I don't really want to apologize to this Cole and Cora person, people, for what they did. What they did was horrible. But he, so here's what I'm hearing. Here's what I'm hearing. You know, I'm going to spin the camera around. I am hearing, folks, that these two individuals, now this is, uh, he's 43 years old. His name is Tad Burt Cullum. And he's the boyfriend to Tiffany Adams, who is 54 years old. Then you got this guy, a.k.a. The Butcher, right? His name is Cole uh, Toomby, Thumby, Thumby, however you want to say his last name. And he is, uh... He is uh, 50 years old, and this is his girlfriend, is a significant other Cora. These two 
I'm told, are housed together in the Texas County Jail. They're on the same wing block. And I think the way I was told was there's a few dozen male inmates there. I don't know the exact number. If someone knows the exact number of the male inmates at this uh, jail, the small jail, please let me know. I think it's like a two dozen. But they're actually in the same wing. They're actually together. Now, they have a separate unit, folks. For females, and there is like, I don't know, less than a handful of uh, uh, females that are there. These two are there. However, folks, these two, this is Tiffany, this is Cora, are separated. They are separated. And I'm told that Tiffany here is in isolation, a.k.a. protective custody. I guess they have a separate unit or maybe a isolation cell that's separate from the other inmates. Now that makes me wonder, is it for her own being? Did she request? If true, if true, if true, do you think she requested on her own initiative to be in protective custody? Or could she be ratting out and flipping on the rest? When she made her confession, did she implicate the others? Therefore, if she did, authorities might have a legal obligation to separate them because the people that were told on, if true, they could retaliate. They could call her a snitch, a rat. You sold us out. And that's a possibility. Now, some people in the chat are saying, S-U-I-C-I-D-E, watch. You know that word where they put you in a green smock and they put you in an isolation shell. And that could be also too because it's a shock culture. She didn't probably thought she wasn't going to get caught or, you know, now she wants to end herself or maybe it's a preliminary matter. But the other ones are. I heard the other ones are like literally in the jail's general population. She is only, she out of the group is the only one separated from the rest. Now that shows me that she talked. But what did she talk about? Did she implicate the others before lawyering up? Did she even lawyer up? I think she did it to an extent because I think she yapped. And then when it came into the details are, where's Veronica? Where's Jillian? She shut up. She shut up. But I really honestly believe that she, now we'll know soon whether this is true or not when affidavits of probable calls come out. We're going to get the police reports. They're going to release the priest police reports. Maybe they didn't do it yet because we're at a weekend. I was shocked that authorities zoomed in and made these arrests on a Saturday. It shows that law enforcement were working around the clock. Sometimes in some jurisdictions, they take the weekend off, you know, and try to get you at the element of surprise during the early mornings raids, right? 5 a.m. raids. That's how the feds operate. They try to get you at 5 a.m. when you're asleep on a weekday. They don't really work on weekends unless it's an emergency. But in this particular case, when you're dealing with a preacher's wife and a mother, yeah, there, there is an emergency. So, yeah, they came in. They swooped in. Don't know what they were, you know, the amount of firepower that they had. I don't know if they were anticipating some sort of gunfight, you know, with these, these, these sovereign citizens because apparently they are sovereign citizens. You know, the ones that don't believe in the government, don't believe to pay taxes, file UCC liens. I did a background on Mr. Burt, Tad Burt, this man right here. I did a background on him and uh, he has all types of UCC filing liens. He's like trying to, he tried to get credit with mentoring banks. He tried to get credit with uh, some place called Dumas uh, Livestock or Dumas uh, type of hay and all types of, uh, you know, cattle stuff. John Deere tractors. He tried to like write off John Deere tractors. Apparently, he got some equipment for his uh, colon farms. Yeah, we're digging. We're digging. Oh, yeah, we're digging on JLR Investigates. Up to speed, trying to find out who these knuckleheads are. Yeah, and I call them out because I think what they did was, you know, we want to be objective here. But, you know, we're also uh, activists here, you know, we want justice for the victims. What they did and what they're accused of is the most egregious thing you could think about. These are mothers. There's no need for this to happen. So they're at this jail right now. They're at this jail. And I want to show you a little bit about 
this jail because I'm trying to get like maybe some inside look or an idea of what this place looks like. Um, it's not very big and it doesn't look that very secure at this jail. And this is called the Texas County Jail. It's at the sheriff's office. It looks like it. But you, as you can see, look at the land around. <laughs> look at the land around the jail. It's like nothing. They actually have houses across the street from the jail or trailers or, you know, uh, trailers across the street from the jail. But it looks like this is on Ellison Street, according to Google Maps, Ellison Street. So we got the jail. And apparently, again, there's a male wing in this jail and there's a female wing. And Miss Tiffany Adams, my sources have told me, is separated from the rest. She is put in protective cut. Yeah, it's not. Imagine trying to escape from here. Hopefully they got there. These are the type of places we see on the news where these inmates from these rural jails escape, right? Now, it, it looks kind of secure, I guess. I mean, look at that. I mean, you got some fencing there. Uh, doesn't look too secure with to me, in a sense, with people that are most likely facing capital punishment. Capital punishment for this crime. I mean, it's a capital crime, for sure. And the fact that they lawyered up before even finding the bodies makes it even more egregious. And a district attorney should note that and you know they'll come up with their determination but when i think of jail cells like this out in the middle of nowhere um i'm thinking don't mess with oklahoma don't mess with oklahoma when you got swat teams with the oklahoma Bureau of investigation coming in full force folks uh and and and, and coming in uh yeah these people here um if i was them i if i was them whether it was tiffany or whatever uh, make the best deal. Accept responsibility immediately and immediately tell your lawyer, I want to speak to the district attorney. I want to speak to the sheriff or the head o o o OBI uh, uh, agent. And I want to confess and spill the beans and I want to share because whoever's the first one takes that bite at that apple probably gets life. The other ones that don't might get the needle might get the needle that's how serious it is because you're talking about two females not even from that state that came from kansas to come down into that state and you're talking about particularly jillian kelly's family who's prominent and well liked in their community they're the pastor they're religious how dare you do this to this these poor families so these people, regardless of their ties and you know to that area, and they're not necessarily from that area. Uh, they lived out in Keys, which is the next county over. So they're not really necessarily from Texas, counting themselves the perpetrators. So yeah, you would expect probably the district attorney, knowing that now everybody's watching, we're all watching, that they're going to, the full force of the law is gonna come at these individuals. I really think so. I really think so. And we should be hearing more details of this situation very very soon uh with these individuals yeah once you go past the jail it's nothing it's just neighborhoods it's just see i mean i'm just showing you the area it's not a big jail but they're there what's going on concrete slabs that's what it's going to be for the rest of their lives um you know they're sort of you know and here's another thing too here's another thing that we don't know yet Knowing their history with the sovereign citizen movement and we knowing that sovereign citizens don't like to uh, participate in court proceedings, it's going to be interesting to see how they play when they go on their arraignment or when they uh, correspond with their lawyers. A lot of them ditch their lawyers and they say they're going to go pro se uh, when defending themselves. But the mother of Jillian has stated on Facebook that the grandma confessed. She has stated that. Uh, these are screenshots. She was in a group. There's a there's a group uh, it's dedicated to this uh, tragedy in um, on Facebook, and this is the mother. This is the mother of Jillian, and the mother says the grandma has confessed to the K I L L I N G them both, confessed to doing that to both. So yeah, she confessed, but it was a kind of like a mixed confession because if she confessed all like that she would have been fully cooperative fully now we suspected the grandmother 
Um, you know, we were, you know, we were GMB and objective because, you know, we didn't really know all the facts and everything like that. But all fingers were pointed at Granny from the get-go. We were getting piles of information, people sending us information from that area. You know, cover this case, cover this case. It's the grandma. They're, they're radical, uh, part of this gods. Uh, I don't know. what I, Somebody can name the organization. It's some sort of gods. Uh, I don't know what it was called. Um, I don't know it offhand, but somebody just said evil granny. But it was like a, like a, almost, I'm not saying like a cult, but it's kind of like, you know, these, these, these people that are like tight knit. But you know, this is what I thought. This is what I thought about the situation, right? I honestly, like, I was ready to go out there and I saw News Nation out there. They're like the only people I've seen out there, boots on the ground. There was a couple other YouTubers there that uh, apparently did some good work. Um, my thought was, you know, you're going to be there. You're going to be intimidated. The locals are going to run you out of town. But then I'm thinking, like, I, you know, if, 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 you know, what they're charged with, right, I can't see how the neighbors around Adams or uh, Tad Cullum would rally behind this type of charge. Now, I could see if the federal government or uh, authorities were going after them because they didn't pay their taxes or they have uh, cattle that they didn't register or some sort of you know, uh, bureaucratic type charge. And then I could see all the neighbors saying, no, we're not going to surrender and would stand up. But who's going to defend? Like what type of neighbors would even defend Tiffany Adams and Tad Burke Collum and Cole and Cora, the other uh, couples, the butcher and his couple, the, the, the livestock guys? Who's even going to defend that? Who, who would even rally behind them? So I didn't even, so then I thought maybe there wouldn't be a standoff with, you know, them and neighbors rallying around them because these people did the most egregious thing you could possibly do to someone. You take away the lives of two mothers is the worst of the worst. You're not going to be cool, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Cole and Mr. Tad are not going to be cool when they go to Oklahoma prison. Matter of fact, their best interests, matter of fact, they might want to be on death row. <laughs> To save them in the general population because they're not going to be well liked. I cannot believe that this guy right here, Mr. Mr. Cole, is older than this guy. He's 43 years old. Look at that. He's 43 years old. Now, we're not judging people on looks when JLR investigates. But, man, I don't know what happened here. I don't know what happened here. What do you think happened? So, let's talk because... <laughs> Man, Tiffany Adams, the grandma, has a Facebook page, and it is wide open, folks. Her Facebook page is, like, totally wide open. And on her Facebook page, and I'm going to show you her Facebook page, she has a couple comments open. And these people, these locals, or it might, not, it might be people from around the country that have been following this case, they're just laying down the comments. They're laying down the comments. This is her Facebook account here, Tiffany Adams. And one thing I notice about her name is always with one F. Or her name is one F. Usually the Tiffany's that I'm aware of have, you know, multiple, you know, T-I-F-F-A-N-Y. But scrolling down her profile, and this is a public profile, she has some interesting posts, right? And, you know, a lot of posts is like protect the children, protect the children. But I want to focus down here, and a lot of her comments here, you can't comment, right? It's only on share. You can't comment. Unless, unless you're a friend of hers. But she does have some posts down here, and I want to show you. I don't even know what this is here, why she has this, but it's no tax hike ahead, no bonds. Um, politically, she leans to the right. She has a lot of right uh, 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 posts. But here you go. Here you go right here. Now, this particular post that she made on November 22nd, or November 20th, 2022, she has the comments open. And here you go. You got 87 comments. And look at the last one here. Huh. Look at what somebody put. Look what somebody put. She is absolutely getting ridiculed. And we'll go through the comments of what people are just angry and frustrated. So first it's talking about her cattle being stolen or her cattle that uh, lost, uh, you know, got out of her pens. And then people are just, from this point on, I'll show you. And then it suddenly just starts one week ago. I'm sure your son stole them and sold them for drugs, sweetheart. And then it just piles in. It just piles in, man. The people now are just piling in. 
What did you do with Veronica? You are being watched. Everyone in town knows you had a hand. Them kids ain't staying with you. You are only the grandma, but you think they are yours. That's why you had Veronica set up. And people are just laying down the comments. Uh, just 24 hours ago, look at this. Have fun in prison. Don't you all fold now that she's in jail? Tell me now, was it worth it to take away the mother of beautiful children? See that word all in capitals? So, yeah. They're uh, laying it down. And that might be one of the reasons why, folks. She also could be in protective custody. Um, you know, isolated from the rest because you look at this. Look at these words. Look what everyone's saying to her. Look, see, see. So much for being a sovereign citizen. Let's see how that works out for you in your DP trial. <laughs> Interesting, right? Sovereign citizen. And, and the word is she's a sovereign citizen. She's part of the sovereign citizen movement. So she is definitely uh, getting ridiculed. So one of the reasons why she might also be in solitary confinement or AKA protective custody is because the locals there might be sick to their stomach and be mad at her for what she did and want to take it out on her, you know, because, you know, some people in jail, believe it or not, locally in these county jails aren't bad people. Some people are just there because they have drug problems or DUI or did something dumb, domestic violence or whatever, sitting in jail a couple of nights. So they're sitting in there and then they hear about this woman coming in doing this egregious act and they might, you know, take it out on her. They might take it out on her. But I do think it's going to be a DP case. Um, she is, <laughs> they, I, I can't imagine, uh, you know, what these victims' families are going through and why and how. And, you know, another thing we're going to just talk about too, you know, we put a, Honestly, man, now that I think about it, think about because it doesn't seem like Wrangler Cole Rickman is involved, right? The, the, he had the child, he had the children with Veronica. He had his own legal issues. He went to rehab right before these um, two females went missing. He went to rehab. He was like a felon with possession of gun or whatever like that. Uh, Tiffany Adams was putting in court documents that he wasn't fit to be a father, or whatnot. I just wonder how he's feeling, man, because. You know, I, I, not knowing him, and I don't know anything, but something tells me without even knowing him, I feel a little bit bad for him. I feel a little bit bad for Wrangler Cole because not only did he lose the mother to his children, but the children are, you know, I don't, who knows where the children are and who knows where it's going to be. He's in rehab, and now his mom and part of his family, mom and boyfriend, are spending their rest of their life in jail. Like, what a mess. I can't imagine what the dude is going through. But I, I wanted to think a little bit deeply and said, man, man, that Wrangler guy, you know, I, I'm sure he has a lot of regrets. Maybe if he, he probably thinking while he's in his rehab, if I wouldn't have gotten in trouble with the law and did all this, I could have had custody of my kids. This would have never happened. I would have still had my mom, still would have had, you know, uh, you know, custody of the kids. Just a mess, just a big, big mess in that particular county and the, everyone involved. You know, I think this is, uh, you know, we don't know the human um, uh, trend aspect of this whole, you know, sad situation, but it probably affected a lot of people. So we don't know the after effects of this and what's going to go down. And, uh, you know, it's just hope that someone accepts responsibility and, uh, you know, helps bring these two um, women home so they could get a proper burial. Um, that's hope for that. Um, that's hope that one of them, you know, comes to their senses and stops being defiant and just fess up and own own up to what they did and uh you know we'll see what happens we're gonna wait for the court documents to come out we're gonna wait for everything and when more transpires and more information comes out we'll share it on this channel but we are uh covering it and uh i think something we'll see here more tomorrow they i think they'll probably have to go to court at least in the next day or two uh for an arraignment and uh you know some affidavits and, and, and arrest stuff might come out maybe even body cam um, so we'll see what transpired um, with this. So I'll keep you informed. I'm JLR Investigates. That's all for this particular uh, segment. Praying for the family of Veronica Butler. Praying for the entire community there.
because we I was watching News Nation. They were talking to locals there at the time when it was mystery and they couldn't find the girls. And even like store owners and everyone was all everyone was on edge, you know. So you know, probably this type of stuff probably doesn't happen at all out there. So I mean, to have this out there in a small community, I think it's a big, big, big deal. I keep you informed and praying for Jillian um, Kelly's family too, and and, and everyone in uh, Kansas that were affected. So. All right, have a great day. Everyone be safe. Sub to the channel, like, hit the notification button. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to share anything with this case or you have any firsthand information or knowledge, uh, JLR at JLR Investigates, shoot it to me and uh, we'll talk. You know, uh, I'd love to get more insight about who these people are and everyone and all the people, players and everyone involved in this case. Or if you have something you want to share, please reach out to me so we can share to the world. Public awareness is important. Uh, we'll talk soon. Have a good day, everyone. Be safe. Happy Sunday, everyone.